this is, I have uh, kind of experienced what uh, Prophet Jeremiah talked about. You got a burning in your bones. That's good when the truth can burn in your bones. I also feel like that, I know Brother Aaron talks about this a lot, on different occasions he brings this up, that, uh, that we're like scribes instructed in the kingdom, like householders that bring out of the treasure things old and things new. And I, there are things in this that I see tonight that, that are things that I saw a long time ago that are still fresh to me. And I'm thankful for that aspect of the kingdom. Things old never become old. You know what I'm saying? But I'm also thankful for this, that when you learn from Christ, you never stop learning. There's always something new to be seen in, the, in those most familiar texts that you, that you have in grasp, know by faith, and, and yet there's something more to be seen in that. And, so, and I'll tell you this also, that when you see those new things, those things make the things that you've seen before that much more precious. They become that much more precious because now you've made more connections with those things. And so... Anyways, I, I, I'm glad. I'm glad that the things of God are so satisfying. Glad for that. Ephesians 1, verse 6. To the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he has made us accepted in the blood, we'll add verse 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. To the praise of the glory of his grace. The end of salvation is to this great objective that God is made known in the outworkings of salvation. It's not just when men are saved. It's not just that, although that's good. And that, that's a part of our objective is the salvation of our souls. But when you finally reach, brethren, heaven shores and you're, and you're safe from peril. That's not the end of the matter. The end of the matter is what is made known about God by how God has worked in you. It's, to, it's for his glory. That is so important that we get a hold of that. that. That won't radically change the way you live your life because I know you're already seeing this. But that kind of helps you get off of just the individual level of just you working out your own salvation. You're seeing there, there are greater things at stake than, than just you advancing or falling. It's how this impacts God. I like this. Isaiah 60, 21 says, Thy people shall all be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever, the branch of my planting, the work of my hands, that I may be glorified. Peter himself affirmed that this was the case when he said he called us out of darkness into his marvelous light that we might show forth his praise. Now, just to pin to this, what I said about this morning, because it's not, it's not just that he's glorified, it's that people who understand God will express that glory in praise, will extol his name in praise, okay? That's what's critical. And in order to praise God, there has to be a connection between what, who God is and what God has done. Yeah. Brother Aaron, you talk about a hard connection. That is what has to be made. You've got to nail down your understanding of what God has said about himself upon the basis of what he has done. As Psalm 106 declares, who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can show forth his praise? That's like a, that's like a Hebraism. It's speaking the same thing in two different ways. You show forth his praise by uttering his mighty acts. But here's the marvelous thing about salvation. Not only, are, not only do we praise the Lord, but we are the vehicle in salvation by which God is being praised. That's the thing. See, there is an aspect of salvation that, that is separate from you. Like when God parts the Red Sea, that's kind of something. That you weren't involved in that. But there is another aspect of salvation where he's being glorified by what he's doing in you. You are a royal diadem. You will be a royal diadem in the hand of our God. See, salvation, God is saving us. Amen. See? And so now, brethren, the question has to be asked. What is it about your conversation that would cause people that have an understanding of God to extol his name and particularly 
to extol his grace. Mm -hmm. Now, this is something that you don't have to be worried about if you are relying on the grace of God. If you are living in a way that requires grace from God, believe me, your life will be a means of God being praised, of the, of the, the glory of his grace being made known in your life. So, but, but see, that's something you have to, you have to address. Are you, are you living in dependence and reliance upon his grace every day? But I, I love to think about that. They, the glory of his grace is going to be shown forth through us, okay? To God be glory in the church by Christ Jesus, world without end. Well, that's a marvelous consideration. Amen. Well, so much for it really doesn't matter what we do and we can live continually failing lives and all these things. And well, how is that going to bring glory to God? And that isn't what salvation does anyway. See, I don't like that notion at all. Now, in our text, the specific thing that shows forth his praise, shows forth the praise of the glory of his grace is this, that he has made a way in salvation for us to be accepted in the beloved. That's the thing that's so marvelous, is to be accepted in the stead of another, that God can receive you upon the basis of your association with someone else whom he has received. Okay? Now, this is no new thing. This is actually one of the more ancient covenants that God has made when he told Abraham, I will bless those that bless you and curse those that curse you, and in you shall all the families of the world, of the earth, be blessed. Now, this is a marvelous thing to consider, okay? In fact, this came true of Israel, as Paul said, that they were beloved for the Father's sake, okay? They were accepted upon the basis of his acceptance of Abraham. Now, particularly when it comes to justification, this is the way it has to be. Somebody has to merit God's favor. Mm -hmm. right. Otherwise, God is unrighteous mm -hmm. in his dealings with men if someone hasn't merited his favor. Mm -hmm. Okay? And if God deals with you on an individual basis, it has to be on the basis of works. Now think, brethren, of what a marvelous testimony this is of his grace, okay? Brother Given, what you said, and I hope this isn't confusing because these are kind of new things to me that I'm, I'm learning and developing. I'm afraid that I was very unsatisfied with my view of what it means to not be saved by works in the sense that Paul talks about. He talks about the election of grace, and he, he says in, let me find this real quick, in, a, in Romans eleven six, if by grace, then it is no more of works. Otherwise, grace is no more grace, but it be, if it be of works, then it is no more grace. Otherwise, work is no more work. So on this foundational level that we're speaking right now, works and grace do not mix. Either you are saved fundamentally. We're speaking about justification. Either you are saved on a fundamental basis, on the basis of what you do, or on the basis of what Christ has done. Amen. And I'm so thankful, Brother, given what you said, because I never wanted to give the notion to people that what you do has nothing to do with salvation. Okay? Never wanted to give that notion. And so you put a handle on that, Brother, when you said that when it comes to obtaining a favor from God, the first issue is you got to get rid of your sin. That's the first issue. See, Paul, Paul would say it this way. Paul doesn't even give you the notion that you can do this. He just says this. Say not in your heart, who shall ascend up to heaven? That is to bring Christ down. Or who shall descend into the, into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. He doesn't even give you the idea that you could do this. But you, in other words, you've got to step into the shoes of God 
and see to it that this happens. Because we all know on this fundamental level, brother, I'm talking about grace here, that there's not a man in the world that can wipe away his sin. Now, brother, look what's happening here. God is designing it this way so that we have an understanding of his grace. Okay? Grace means that here this unrighteous, unprofitable people, when Adam sinned, that transgression flourished throughout the entire race, and so that none became righteous to show forth that grace means that you're going to have to rely on the living God to make a provision for you that you can't possibly make for yourself. And here enters Jesus to provide a righteous basis for God to receive men. And it comes down to one act of obedience. Okay? That's the redemption that is in Christ, even the forgiveness of sins. That is to say, his grace and favor is dispensed to you on this basis, that you believe in the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and then the things that Jesus has done to make it right for God to receive you, you obtain the benefit of that. See? And in that sense, you are accepted in the beloved. He says that, says that you are forgiven for Christ's sake, he says in the book of Ephesians. You're all the children of God by the faith of Christ Jesus, see? And we have access with boldness by the faith of Christ Jesus. So we are made accepted on the basis of what Jesus has done. And yet, see, look, but salvation goes beyond that because it not only makes us accepted, it makes us acceptable. It's not just that, well, Jesus now, he's, he's the righteous one, but we're not righteous, and, but we are received, thank God, because we have faith. It's not that. That's not what this is. That's not what this is. See? Grace enables us to be put in a place where we can obtain the, the resources from God to live and walk in a way that's acceptable to him. See, that's the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, the forgiveness of sins. That's, that's a marvelous thing to behold. That's an aspect of grace. See, grace is an equipping resource. Yes. Yeah. It's an equipping resource. See, when Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord, how that worked out is God told him the end of all flesh is before him. He told him exactly what he's going to do, and then he gave him the blueprints to enter into the work effectually. And to, so to speak, work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. This is an aspect of grace that we want to be able to, to get a hold of. It equips you. It's like what Paul said. He says, he says, I've labored more abundantly than they all, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. See, so grace is this marvelous equipping resource. And so I, I, I'll tell you, I am, I am thankful that he's made a way for us to be accepted in the beloved. See, every bit of favor that God shows you is through the faith of Christ Jesus. You've got to have a proper foundation for coming to God. You don't come on the basis of what you do. You come on the basis of your faith in what Christ has done. And then your doing becomes the result of him providing resources to enable you. And so I'm thankful that he's shown me these things. You know, one of the things that I took from Babylon that God has shown me now is this whole nation, notion that somehow... Somehow, you can be confident before God on the fundamental basis of what you do. Yeah. And so I just, just focused on myself. And, and, and even you can even, brother, you can even look at the advancements you're making in Christ and that become a basis for your trust. Then, rather than realizing that comes through the faith of Christ Jesus and what he has done. See, that can, it can be a bad thing. And so I'm thankful that he's, that he's shown us these things. We are accepted in the beloved from beginning to end. Father, we thank you for these good things. We thank you for the grace that you have provided us. We're grateful that Jesus has made a just basis for us to be saved. And we're thankful that we continue to walk by the faith of Christ Jesus. And you provide every resource we need for life and godliness through the knowledge of him. We rejoice in what you've done, and we rejoice that this work is going to redound to the glory of your name. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.